Hello, guys, and thank you so much for tuning back in to another episode of The Real Convo. Just one moment, I'm going to head over to my Instagram and make sure that I'm live over on Instagram. Hell, just one moment, I'm going to mute my mic for just a moment. I'm not really sure sure what's going on and why I'm not being able to go live over here on over on Instagram, but I'm gonna see if I can go live on my phone for my Instagram family. I tried going live. Okay.
So are you telling me that I was mute this entire time on YouTube? Okay. So, okay. So if I, so that, so I was mute this entire time. Okay, guys. So as you can see, I'm having some technical difficulties. I don't know which part you guys got and which part you guys didn't get, but I'm just going to go ahead and do another quick run through for my YouTube family that decided to log on and watch. Tonight, we're going to discuss Portia Gabadia and her soon-to-be ex-husband, Simon Gabadia, claiming and alleging that she came to his home with man and see what that whole fiasco was about and what is i mean this fiasco and the whole divorcing with um simon and portia is just really really getting exciting to me and i feel as though boy does she have a storyline for real house housewives of atlanta and are they getting any of this on film because i mean this is the drama that people want to see they want to see what portia has been doing with simon gabadia but just one moment i'm going to go ahead and pull up the article for you guys and then after i pull up the article i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick screen share okay so i'm just going to go ahead and position everything uh what does page six want to do uh, -uh i don't know that's not allowed them to do that and I need my computer now. So have you guys sub subscribed to the channel as of yet, as of now? Are you subscribed? Are you following me on Instagram at The Real Convo? And I also can be reached on Facebook at The Real Convo, D-A-R-E-A-L-C-O-N-V-O. -E and it is exactly how the YouTube name is spelled on Instagram and on excuse me, Facebook, and it is also spelled that way on Twitter. So you can reach me on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at The Real Convo, D-A-R-E-A-L-C-O-N-V-O. So we are going to share the screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm reading from. And you can see what I see. So again, if you want to see what I'm seeing, go ahead and just head over to. OK, so we are sharing this screen. Head over to YouTube, D-A-R-E-A-L-C-O-N-V-O. -E but the previous post that I just posted, just click the link and it'll bring you right into this live broadcast that we are doing on YouTube, guys. So. This article was published March 25, 2024 at 11.01 a.m. Simon Gabadia claims Portia Williams brought pop pop men to marital home. Police called to the scene. So he's saying that she brought, she brought this man to the home that they lived at while they were living as husband and wife. Simon Gabadia fired back at estranged wife Portia Williams' divorce filing, claiming in new court documents that the Real Housewives of Atlanta star brought an armed pop-pop man to their marital home. In the documents obtained by page six Monday, Gabadia alleges the reality star abandoned their house at one point, only to return with a man visibly bearing a pop pop for reasons. And when I say pop pop, I mean this. When I'm um, monetized on YouTube, you can't say um, G U N. So that's why you hear me saying pop pop. So, yeah, that's just what it is with the rules and regulations and guidelines on YouTube. So, again, if you want to see the article that I'm reading live on my YouTube with my YouTube audience, you can click out of Facebook, head over to YouTube on The Real Convo and hit the live tab and it'll bring you to it'll bring you to the exact same broadcast, but you'll be able to see the documents and where I'm getting the information from. The article goes on to say, in the documents obtained by page six Monday, Gabadia alleges the reality star abandoned their house at one point, only to return with a pop-pop man visibly wearing his pop-pop for reasons unknown to Gabadia. So what he is saying basically is that she shows up with this man uh, wearing a pop-pop and he's just looking around like, okay, well, why is he here? And why is why are you bringing this man into my house? But not only are, why are you bringing this man to my house, but he has a firearm. The entrepreneur claims that Williams brought the man on two occasions. Mm, 
Wow. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep reading. Just one moment. Let's keep reading. Okay. Hold on. All these ads. Okay. Gabadia alleges that during one instance, which took place on March 21st, he had a call post. He had to call police to maintain the peace. He also claims that Williams, 42, had third parties to call and harass Gabadia and others in an effort to force them out. Let's read that again. He also claims that Williams, 42, Portia Williams, had a third party to call and harass Gabadia, to call and harass him. So meaning like she had a homegirl, a homeboy or someone with her and a couple of, you know, her gang, gang, gang to call and harass Gabadia. And she did this in an effort to force them out, to force him out. Gabadia alleges that on, on or about March 24th, Williams, her mother and her mother's boyfriend made a forcible entry into the marital home, into the marital home disengaged security cameras and tampered with items and evidence. So they disengaged security cameras and tampered with items and evidence. Girl, these are some allegations that Mr. Gabadia is trying to put on you. Let's read that again. Gabadia alleges that on or about March 24th, William Williams, her mother and her mother's boyfriend made a forcible entry into the marital home, disengaged security cameras and tampered with items and evidence. So evidence of what? All of this fraud stuff that we've been seeing about you, Mr. Simon Gabadia. So you saying that her, her mom, her stepdad, that they all came and messed with cameras and evidence in the house that is associated to the criminal charges that you are currently facing. Is that what you are alleging? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I'm confused by that part, but that's what the article seems to be saying if we are reading this correctly. Since the file, since the filing of the instant divorce, what um since the file filing of the instant divorce, what are they trying to say? Wife's actions have been erratic, unstable, threatening, and harassing to the house staff and minor children. The document state Williams' behavior has caused has caused safety concerns, especially since there are minor children, Gabadia's children, currently living in the marital residence. So, oh, okay. So he's saying that her behavior has caused concern because I, I guess it scares the kids, his kids who are still, he and his babies are still residing in the home that he and Portia live together, all together with both their families blended. Now that they are going through this current divorce, he's claiming that I guess she's erratic and off the hinges and she's being um, she's causing she's disturbing the peace and she's just all over the place is what he's saying. Let's read that again. Let's run that back so we can make sure that we read that with comprehension. So let's read. Let's go back just a bit. Gabadia alleges that during one instance, which took place on March 21st, he had to call police to maintain the peace. He also claims that Williams, who is 42 years old, had third parties to call and harass Gabadia and others in an effort to force them out. Gabadia alleges that on or about March 24th, Williams, her mother and her mother's boyfriend made a forcibly entry into the marital home disengaged security cameras and tampered with items and evidence okay so why would you okay okay i'm not gonna even say that but y'all read what i just read he's sitting with evidence okay since the filing of the instant divorce wife's actions have been erratic unstable, threatening, and harassing to the house staff and the minor children in the documents. They so she's so this so you are saying that she's been mean to your baby, Simon. Oh my gosh. She are you saying that Portia is mean to kids and she has a child? Interesting. Williams behavior has caused has caused safety concerns, especially since there are minor children, Gabadia's children, currently living in the marital residence. Mm. 
This is getting very, 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 very messy. Gabadia, 59, so he's, what, 17 years her senior, is requesting a judge issue a restraining order against the Bravo Liberty. Oh, my goodness. No, they did not go back and clock NeNe Leakes' team when she, when she said the other day that Portia is a Bravo Liberty. <laughs> okay, well, mm, let's, <laughs> who said that these... um. <laughs> People who run these um, news articles are not messy. Reps and attorneys for Williams, Williams did not immediately return Page Six's request for comment. Page Six also has reached out to the police department to confirm Gabadia's allegations. Williams filed for divorce from Gabadia last month after just one year of marriage and immediately requested that the businessmen not destroy any financial records. Also, oh, now he's trying to say that she and her mom and her stepdad are destroying records when it's already on file from when she filed her initial um her initial court um proceedings asking for a divorce that she asked that you not remove any evidence. So okay, nice try, Mr. Gabadia. What do you okay? In his filing, however, Gabadia claims Williams took calculated steps to marry and divorce him shortly thereafter to intentionally trigger parts of their prenup for, for personal financial gain and greed. Williams since has severed all public ties. Mm, she has severed all public ties to her now estranged husband removing his last name from her Instagram account and deleting various photos. So she has severed her ties. She definitely has done that because if you go down Portia, Portia's page, it doesn't say Portia's goodbye, Portia Gabadia. It says Portia Williams. So yeah, that is fact. Um, and I feel that she has every 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 right to disassociate herself in several uh several ties because i mean look at what he's putting out and look what he's putting into the court complaints so, yeah since then gabadia already already has sparked romance rumors with a fitness trainer wow so portia be moving pretty fast according to the page six reporters She's wasting no time. He's not wasting time either. So um, it looks like um, that's all that article had to offer. And let me just get back over here and um, get to Instagram and pull you guys the article that I am referencing this data from. Okay. So, well, no, I'm not going to be able to reference, um, go back. Um, let's see. Hold on, Facebook, I'll be back. Okay, just one moment, guys. So, I'm not going to be able to do a share screen. I will be able to... just read you guys what I'm referencing. Okay. Okay. So, uh, it's not going to let me go into there for some reason. So, let me see. Okay, so this article reads, breaking news, Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes reportedly raided by federal law enforcement. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to have to end tonight's broadcast because while I am streaming on Instagram live, it will not allow me to bring up the post and what I'm referencing. And I would really, 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 
really like to be able to bring up that information. Um, so I don't want to just really go into too much detail. But um, let me give you guys my quick thoughts on Portia Gabadia and her husband, Simon. Um, if she showed up with gunmen, gunmen, I want to know, like, why would she feel as though she needs to show up with gunmen? Like, if you were, ju were just married to somebody living as husband and wife, like, do you not think that's strange? Unless there was, like, some type of alleged violence in the relationship. That's the only thing I could think of. Like, okay, well, why is she bringing a, a, a gun, somebody with a pop-pop? Does that even make sense to you? That makes no sense to me. I mean, like, seriously, it, it it's not adding up. Like, you put that out there without explanation. Like, oh, well, I'm just going to put out here that she came to my house with two people carrying firearms and she came and messed with the security cameras and destroyed evidence and she was very erratic and her behavior was all over the place and to the point where it was scaring my children and so you know Portia needs to be evaluated and she's done things to just separate herself from me she's not carrying her last my last name anymore and you know she's done things to make sure I'm not able to get my hands on any of her riches so did you think that Portia was dumb because she was a housewife did you think that she was not gonna have a prenup in place like when you were signing papers did you did you not already know that she had a prenup in place like it, are, are those not conversations that you have before you enter into a agreement of marriage with someone I mean like how long did you guys date and really to be honest with you like I'm not gonna be on I'm not gonna be like I'm just trying to figure out what does Simon want from us? Does Simon want us to feel sorry for him? Because, I mean, how did you get Portia, Simon? Let's just really be real here. Simon, how did you get Miss Portia on your team? It was some, you know, some stuff going on. You were married to that one woman on the Potomac Housewives and I believe that Portia, you know, came through and she probably was peeping the scene and looking like, oh, does she, she probably don't know what to do with this rich African man. I can show him how he's supposed to be really getting what rooms he's supposed to be in here in the United States of America now. Because she probably don't know what to do with him. She, she doesn't know what to do with him. And frolicked up on what she thought is, at the time was a come up. And we see where that got her. We looking at it out on fold now. So yeah, but I mean, Portia, and I don't, I mean, the same for her as well. Like, are we supposed to be feeling sorry for her? Because I don't feel sorry. That woman lost her husband. You gained a arranged married husband, Portia. And we've seen it all unfold before our eyes now right now so that's all i feel like is going on we just see it all unfold and when you get these men when you try to go and get these women and you go behind people back and do all this evil deceitful low down dirty shicey ass shit and then when the bridge and the damn ship and the house start crumbling down y'all want to release articles like what the hell do y'all want us the damn people to be saying what do y'all want from us what what do y'all want to hear from us i feel like what did you think was gonna come out of this Portia and Simon. Nobody want thinking. <laughs> were either one of you thinking about that woman's feelings when y'all did, however y'all did what y'all were gonna do when y'all put this marriage together? That's all I'm saying. That's all I wants to know. That's all. Can somebody answer that for me? Yeah, like get out of here with that, honey. Hold on, let me see if we can end the um the uh okay, so we are going to end the broadcast on Instagram so that I can go over and pull up the documents, the post from what I'm referring to and the conversation that we are having tonight. So 
just one moment guys if you'd be a tad bit patient with me i'm going to go into the next story so no i do not have to get out of here we can continue to have a real conversation if you have not already subscribed what are you waiting for please go ahead and subscribe to my channel like the video share your comments down below and please share the video with your friends. You can email the video to yourself in an email or you can um, share it to your social medias, either or whatever you prefer. But show me some love and share the video. It costs absolutely nothing. It is completely free of charge. OK, so I don't know if. Let's see. Um. I'm here. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on, but um I need to there we go get over here and I am going to pull up the pose okay and this okay so the first so my articles are going to come from the shade room the neighborhood talk and Hollywood unlock Okay, so just one moment. Let me get over here so we can share this screen right here. And you guys can see that, okay? So I'm just going to come back over here and do a quick share screen. different law enforcement vehicles at least there are three bear fair use hold on let me put up my fair use fair use fair use Okay, so we have the copyright disclaimer up, um, giving me the right to share this footage with you guys per the fair use doctrine. So let's just go ahead and continue. Cats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago we got here even before the crime scene tape came up so uh we're just okay so the article reads oops diddy's los angeles and miami homes raided by homeland security in connection to blank trafficking investigation um you know when you pimp people out and sell their bodies in exchange for you know um pleasure stuff like that uh trafficking investigation his son justin Cone is in handcuffs this is sad and this is this is justin combs right here and this is the back of looks to me looks like to be king combs head but this is for sure justin combs so i'm gonna let you guys hear what they are saying just one moment and i'm doing this in such a way so that i don't receive any copyright strikes so just one moment down the hill, if you look up the street where Tony is right now, to the right, you'll see one of those bear cats and law enforcement on the other side of those bushes. Basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about. 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say 
less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is being linked to a sex. That's a big home. And from my, well, hold on. Let me pull up the next article so you guys can see. Diddy's son, this article here from Hollywood Unlocked says, Diddy's sons, Justin Combs and Christian Combs spotted in handcuffs during raid. Justin Combs and Christian Combs were spotted in handcuffs while Diddy's Los Angeles home was being raided by federal agents. Let's see if there's anything I feel like is worth uh, showing you guys then. Well, this is just showing you guys that they were both and um custody so let's do this let me go ahead and share that with you so yeah this is just showing that they were both in custody put this on charge before we don't okay so, yeah, it's just showing that they are both in custody. Yeah, Christian Combs spotted in handcuffs during raid. There is King Combs and there is Christian right here. King Combs would be the young man in the black shirt and the black pants looking at the camera and helicopters maybe. And then this is his brother right here next to him hit, um, with the gray shirt and red lettering. About 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're well, just down the same footage from the other clip update footage shows Diddy's Los Angeles home being raided by federal law enforcement. Randomly, and again, this is just a, a guess. They, you know, I don't think they're going in randomly, just going through, you know, everybody's stuff inside there. They probably have an area that they know or in an office that they're going to be looking into or some computers that they might want to physically get their hands on. And that's what they're waiting for right now to make their way inside this property. This, like you said, very beautiful home out there in the Homely Hills area. And they just waiting to get the all clear to allow them inside while these, uh, while these officers that we see right there in the tactical gear – well, their job is to make sure that everything is safe for them to go in. Now, they don't probably, you know, again, I just want to be clear. It's like nobody's thinking that there's booby traps or some kind of sniper inside the home. That's not what they're thinking at all. It's probably more along the lines of they want to make sure that everybody is outside of the home because they don't want to have somebody stepping out or coming out later on and, you know, surprising or catching people off guard. That's not what they want. And right now you can see like, like the, Randomly, and again, this is just a, a guess. They, you know, I don't think they're going in randomly, just going. So that's that is one thing, but I also wanted to just pull up for you guys. Through, you know, everybody's stuff inside there. They probably have an area that they know or in an office that they're going to be looking into or some computers that they might want to physically get their hands on. And that's what they're waiting for right now to make their way inside this property. This, like you said, very beautiful home out there in the Homely Hills area. And they just wait to get at the all. Yes. Yeah, so. This is serious, and I remember being on here saying that Diddy was about to get the Bill Cosby and R. Kelly treatment, and I remember going live on Facebook and saying the same thing, and there was a guy just arguing with me as if Diddy had paid his mortgage for 20 years. I mean, he was just, Diddy haven't been arrested. That, that was just all about the money. All those people didn't want nothing but money. Where is the criminal charges? And I kept telling him. Wait a minute. 
Okay. What? Okay. Let me just exit that browser app, period. I don't know what that was about, but okay. We're going to pretend that that did not just happen. But yes, I remember saying that Diddy was about to get the Bill Cosby and R. Kelly treatment. That the reason why he settled that case so fast that he had bigger fish to fry. The case with Cassie is what I'm referring to. And also the, the fact that he had hired the attorney, Sean Holly. I told you guys, Sean Holly is a criminal and civil attorney. Why, if all of this is just civil this and civil that, and it's all about the money, and why is any why is there not anyone filing uh, criminal uh, charges, and why is there not a criminal case filed, and why has Diddy not been arrested? Well, here is the very beginning of Diddy being that that road coming ahead, in my opinion, allegedly, from what I see, this is the beginning of. Possibly, in my opinion, an arrest, but I don't want to speak too soon. I'm just going to pull up some efforts. I'm going to pull up a, um, let me see. I'm going to pull up a um, article from the news station talking about this. So, yes, let me see. History that I had already watched. It was one in particular. Okay, so I possibly, just a moment, I'm about to pull it up guys. Have you guys subscribed to my channel yet? What are you waiting for? Subscribe, thumbs up the video, comment, share your thoughts. Do you agree? Why? Do you disagree? Why? Mm -hmm. That way. That's what I want to know from you guys. Okay. Did I just watch all those videos? Okay. I think this is the one that I want you guys to see. So let me just get back over here. Let me just turn the volume down. Over there. Fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use. Let's go ahead and do another share screen. I thought the ad was already playing. I'm sorry to skip y'all ad, but I'm trying, me and my listeners, we trying to get to the mess. Oh, come on, internet. Uh, this home and property. So clearly, this is going to take. Because as y'all can see, I watched it a couple of times. Let me rewind it for you guys. Nope, just the uh, just these uh, the guys on the ground down there, the the heavily armed uh, officers that made their way inside. They actually are kind of just milling about or holding the perimeter as it would be the non-essential. You can see them making their way back over to these armored vehicles. Probably doing a little deeper. And they have a lot of ground to cover and search, guys. Keep that in mind, seriously. And I'm, we are not going to be able to just watch this video all the way through due to copyright infringement, okay? But I am covered up under fair use doctrine and um, to be able to use this so that we can reference back to it for entertainment and educational purposes. So just a moment, guys brief about what they saw in, in any type of these situations it really is you know you've got these armored officers that go in first but i would venture to say the investigators or the people that are know what they're looking for probably still out there on the streets and they're waiting for that so are y'all saying that the people that came the investigators that are on the grounds that they know they going into particular rooms looking for specific things i mean is that what y'all saying all clear to make sure that there is absolutely nobody on this property and again this is just a, a precaution they don't want to have any kind of issues maybe somebody's hiding still maybe just scared what do you mean somebody's hiding and somebody is just scared or are you guys insinuating that come on now now not only is diddy having these free calls but diddy is scaring the people that is more to it come on come on y'all 
Don't. Okay. Let's keep going. And, you know, it doesn't have to be nefarious. Uh, and just because they don't know what going on and they just don't want to have somebody pop out of a, a closet or a bathroom or any, any one of these rooms while they're doing that investigation and then other problems can ensue. So that's basically why we're seeing that large presence. They keep walking through there and like you mentioned, this is an extremely large home and probably with many rooms. And I just told y'all that this is a really pretty big home with a lot of rooms and they have to go through and literally do a thorough thorough check of our room so they are probably about to be in Didi's home all night but just but one moment little secret area so they want to make sure that everything is cleared before they allow those investigators in to start doing that investigation whatever it is that they're looking for but you can see a number of those officers making their way back into that major this is the big main house as it would be making their way back inside and i would venture to say that they're going to just go through every one of those rooms and make sure that there is nobody in there i don't think they're those those guys that we're seeing guys and gals that we're seeing in those heavily armed armored uh, gear and equipment. I don't think they're actually searching for any items that could connect uh, whatever the investigation is. I would venture to say that those are going to be the guys that you're seeing right there, and they're waiting for that all clear. And then this group that you see there, those are the ones that are actually going to go inside. They probably have, like you said, they probably have ideas where what they're looking for, where they might be seem to make sure that everybody is out of this building and that it is secure for the uh for the investigators to make their way yes in please let's action. play the waiting game and let them make sure everybody is out of this building and they don't take any chances of somebody popping out and some pop holes go off on the police end we don't need another story another uh george floyd moment so please make sure everybody is out of there even though y'all all a bunch of low class low life sack of start that search and we should mention thank you Stu that uh, if this is in fact involving a sex trafficking investigation we do know that according to Diddy's attorneys and the rapper himself he has denied any wrongdoing in any of all this so uh, there are two sides of course to this as this all plays out but it's interesting that these raids happening at the same time according to TMZ a raid of the Miami home is happening right now as well as now we're looking at the live pictures of what's going on in Holmby Hills at this mansion right here so they are showing you guys the raid going on in Miami and the raid going on in his California home all at the same time. And if you over here, wow. All connected to Sean Combs. So again, until we find out further word as to what exactly they're searching for and why, uh, we continue to look at the procedures taking place Regarding this raid that's being conducted by Homeland Security, you have support from local law enforcement officials as well. We saw from the ground shots, you see multiple agencies there, a part of all of this, and uh, they have a number of resources on hand with a drone flying up top, as well as they had ladders taking uh, a closer look at certain parts of the property. And so they are looking at every nook and cranny they need to in terms of why they're investigating uh, this home and property. So clearly, this is going to take a while. And as Haley mentioned, with her shot down on the ground right there, more people are coming to your area, Haley. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Tell me about your new. Hold on. I'm just going to mute it out. So, what they basically saying is, like I as stated earlier, they are going to sit here and they are going to search every nook and cranny of Diddy's house. They're going to look for this evidence. He's not going to get away with anything criminal if he has committed a crime. Just one moment, y'all. Yeah, I would say it's mostly media at this point. We were uh, the first ones here on scene. But yeah, since there's probably a dozen different uh, media agencies. Yeah, it looks like his uh, his homes on both coasts are being raided.
treated. We still have not gotten word on exactly where P. Diddy is, if he is, in fact, in New York right now or in Los Angeles. And, uh, of course, remember they you know, said, that, OK, hold on, y'all. Let me pause it right because I want to show y'all I want to show you guys another article about his whereabouts. Now, remember um, this part of the video that we are watching, guys, where the news reporter is saying that basically they have tried to contact Diddy, ask his attorneys, hey, where is Diddy? Does Diddy want to give a statement? And Diddy is nowhere to be found. So I have an article about that as well. So just one moment. Let's continue to listen. And it unfolded, I'd say, about 30 minutes ago. Uh, they're at his home here. They're also at his home in Miami. Of course, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit calmer, I would say, than it was about 20 minutes ago when it all happened. Uh, the, the guns that were drawn earlier have been since put away. They yeah, they yeah. Put away. so they came in hard with, with fire arms. They were serious. The for any kind of details that they can come up with related to this, uh, these allegations against yeah. sex trafficking. As you said, Sandra, there's several lawsuits against him for uh, if you guys want to see what i'm denied. listening to uh, so on youtube to pick out a facebook uh, go to youtube the details of, click. of what type of, uh, uh, combo d-a-r-e-a-l-c-o-n-d-o -E -E click the live tab and, and watch the live video really and you can see everything that i'm yeah from the, the point Haley, does it look like some authorities are leaving this the scene right now they're they're done or not is that not the case no, it looks like more are coming. Um, I think what you're seeing is just the vehicles moving to a different location. We're kind of at the bottom of the hill. But if you go up a little bit farther, some of the vehicles that you saw down here earlier have since uh, kind of gone to the other side of the hill. This is obviously a very prestigious neighborhood. Uh, I said earlier, Humphrey Bogart's former house, I think, is next door to P. Diddy's on uh, the 200 block here of Ableton and Holmby Hills off of Sunset near uh, Beverly Glen. Um, so the vehicles have basically just moved forward. You're seeing a lot more of those uh, law enforcement officers from the Department of Homeland Security, though, back here on the street in Mapleton since uh, they've come out of the home after they've done their thorough investigating inside um, that beautiful home belonging to P. Diddy, to Sean Combs. So I don't think they have any intention, Sandra, on going anywhere anytime soon. And overhead, you can see a lawn. So it does look like they are going to be raiding Diddy's home all night. They're going to find some evidence of these alleged free calls that Diddy has been hosting at his home for the last at least two decades helicopters and of course Stu up there in Sky Fox. Thank you so much Haley for that perspective on the ground right there in front of that Holmby Hills mansion. Stu up in Sky Fox it looks like yes there are some more law enforcement but in different attire. I shall should I say suits in instead of body armor. Okay, so those are the, so, so what they saying now are the detectives and investigators have shown up. They don't have on body armor, so yeah. The suits are going to be the investigators and probably the, uh, the the ones that are running the show. And again, I still think that they are just waiting for that uh, green light for them to be allowed to make their way inside the property and to make their way to the areas that I would venture to say that they probably are pretty specific. I don't think they're just going in randomly. And again, this is just a, a guess. They, you know, I don't think they're going in randomly, just going through you know everybody's stuff inside there. They probably have an area that they know or in an office that they're going to be looking into or some computers that they might want to physically get their hands on and that's what they're waiting for right now to make their way inside this property this be like you said very beautiful home out there in the homely hills area and they just waiting to get the all clear to allow them inside while these uh, uh these officers that we see right there in the tactical gear well their job is to make sure that everything is safe for them to go in now they don't probably it, it, and again, I just want to be clear. It's like nobody's thinking that there's booby traps or some kind of sniper inside the home. That's not what they're thinking at all. Again, Facebook family, if you want to see the news coverage of P. Diddy, Puff Diddy Homes, uh, uh, Puff Diddy, Sean Combs home being raided with him and his sons, where his sons is detained and taken into co police custody, go to YouTube at the, the Real Combo. Click the live tab and watch the live video that's going right now. Okay. It's probably more along the lines of they want to make sure that...
everybody is outside of the home because they don't want to have somebody stepping out or coming out later on and you know surprising or catching people off guard that's not what they want and right now you can see like like the like uh Sandra, you've been saying there's a large number of people out here. I would venture to say, as far as the officers go, I would probably put this group closer to 100, not just what we're seeing right here. This is just one group of many that have made their way out here to this Homely Hills area. And as far as the suits that we were talking about, that's part of the group right there. But there's some other ones as well, younger ones that were leading, basically leading the charge. And they, they that's them right there, actually. They, they perfect timing. And it looks like they're making their way over towards the home. They might be the first one wants to make their way in to to start that investigation process or f figure out where we're going to look what we're looking for and then later on the uh, suits will make their way in as well but this it, like you said is going to be a very long process out here and this is just the very very beginning and the folks that they had taken into custody they've moved them out of the area right now and again wouldn't say that they are arrested. We don't know that for a fact. They took them into custody. A few of them still had cuffs on. Some of them didn't. So maybe this was a division of, you know, these are people that we know work here. These are people that may be associated uh, with Sean Combs so or Bad Boy Entertainment. So it, it, it's one of those type of situations. And until they know who they are, they're just going to keep them in custody and possibly just let them go later on. I don't believe the word so you, arrested has been used out here as of yet, but again, it's still a very active situation. And of course, that is a huge house and they've got a lot of rooms to clear before they allow those investigators in. Wow. So people came to work today, Sean Diddy P. Diddy. Brother Love Combs and were possibly arrested slash taken into police custody because you wanted to start having freak outs. So people came to work for you today and they were taken into police custody because of your behavior, because of your lack of responsibility, because your your lack of, um, uh, of professionalism, because of your need to be a predator, allegedly. Just one moment. I had another um, report that I wanted to pull up, but it looked like it looks like they have already started the beginning of the scrubbing process. Yep, they have passed. Okay, so it looks like they have started the beginning of the scrubbing process. What do I think about this? I think this is the beginning of a criminal a, a long criminal investigation that is starting that we are seeing the beginning of a criminal investigation i think it's sad that puffy has his sons involved in his craziness y'all not the big old million dollar mogul the big old genius the big old smart guy the big old guy that got all of the money, got all the bread, and he going to tell us all how to get our life together. He going to tell us all what to do, how to become this mogul. And you know what, Puff Daddy, you can F you. Our legacy, our music legacy in Hollywood right now in the industry is shot to pieces right during the 50 years of hip hop. So even though y'all broke down all those doors, Y'all kicked down all of those barriers that were in in the way back then in the nineties. Because let's not let's not forget that Pup Daddy is not the only person in this lawsuit that that producer, Mister, um, that I did the uh, video on last week, the producer that helped produce the the last album that Puffy released, the male victim who filed the lawsuit, and his lawsuit is seventy five pages long. Let's not forget that in that lawsuit. And in all the lawsuits, periods, names that have been mentioned are Cuba Gooding Jr., Young Miami, and her cousin. Um, we have, who else? Usher. Who else did they list celebrity-wise? We have Usher. We have um, Aaron Hall. We have, who else do we have listed? Uh some of his security. We have not only some of his security in those other names. We have, that's why I want to get on here and I want to go through the, I want to go through the, uh, let me see if I can find it. I want to go through the 75 page 
lawsuit. That's what I want to do. I want to go through all 75 pages because all 75 pages, it's going to show, it's going to tell us in detail who's in this lawsuit. The person who was listed as Jane Doe, Diddy had his attorney to go in and file a uh, motion to have that person say who they were. I want to get information on that. That hasn't been made public yet unless I haven't. I just haven't seen it. Let me see. Yeah, but I want to get a hold of that lawsuit, which I do have, and I want us to go through it. I think this is sad. I think this is I think this is sad. I think Diddy is a poor. I, I just if this stuff is, is true, and I believe the victims, I always believe the victims. And I've been around since the early 90s. And these allegations here are just not new allegations. And I just I just really do believe it. I believe everything that they said about, about you, Mr. Diddy. I believe that these allegations are true. And I believe that Puffy needs to bow out gracefully. And I think he did right settling that lawsuit in an in a attempt to make all of this noise go away so that when this day right here came, we wouldn't be paying attention. That was the whole reason to go ahead and settle the lawsuit within 24 hours. Maybe everybody will stop talking about it. I told y'all when I initially saw the lawsuit that Cassie had in, in on Instagram, initially saw the post saying that she had sued him. I also saw a post that same day saying that there was a criminal investigation for Puffy in relation to human trafficking, ex-trafficking. And now look, now look, look where we at. I hope you come back on my Facebook that God that was on her arguing with me that day. They were saying that Diddy, well, where everybody at? Well, why did nobody um have him arrested? Oh, oh. What are you still talking? Are you still talking? And then, oh yeah, let me get back to this. And the re the reason why I said, let me tell you, let me show y'all the reason why I said that. Puffy is sad. Puffy is sad. Like, look, Kim said, I just want to see him show somebody loyalty. Just one person, just one time, just show somebody some loyalty. She said that about twelve years ago. Look, Kim said that in an interview. And boy, 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 boy. Mm -mm -mm. Did my eyes just fool me? Hold on, y'all. Let me share the screen with y'all really fast. Hold on. I'm going over here to Instagram to try to show y'all the other article. Footage reportedly shows Diddy walking outside of Miami airport after two of his homes were raided by feds. Footage reportedly shows Diddy walking outside of Miami airport after two of his homes were raided. So after his homes was, were raided. I guess you wonder what's gonna happen next, Diddy. I know. Y'all want to see what I'm seeing on the screen? Go to my YouTube, The Real Cover, and click the live tab. Oh, it's all right. Okay, hold on, y'all. Let's read the post and let's get into the post. Footage obtained by TMZ TV reportedly shows Diddy at Miami Opelika Executive Airport a few hours after two of his homes were raided by federal agents. As we previously reported, Diddy's private plane was traced to the Caribbean islands today.
There was no evidence showing he was on the plane or not, according to TMZ. While at the Miami airport, Diddy and others were stopped by federal agents. They say this footage shows him waiting outside of the customs office for the cop for his for the colleagues he was with. Y'all know during where Diddy was on that damn on that on that uh, was on that jet was on that plane. That attorney possibly called him and told him, if you don't get your ass, because I ain't going to be able to get you out of no trouble like that if you flee. In my opinion, allegedly, that's just what I think. Let's see what y'all saying in the comments. No, for real. Can somebody give me the scoop on what he has done for the raid? See, man, I, I had Diddy back. Can't leave your kids behind in all this, G. Innocent or not, you got to be willing to die for your kids. Smoke and mirrors, folks. Something bigger is going on. Now that I agree with. Smoke and mirrors, folks. Something bigger is going on. Now that comment resonates with me. No lie, he's really looking like he's like his reality is setting in and about what is happening to his life. It is setting in. It really, yeah, it's setting in that you can't have no freak offs and do all of this crazy stuff and do and, and condone and participate in all this illegal behavior and then just think you're gonna get away with it because you have money and access and what you call power. No, sir. That's that walk when you know you done got in trouble at school and you waited for your parents to get home. <laughs> it's the cameraman for me, Jess Petty. Okay, now this is actually not funny or a joke. I hope someone intervenes. I know that mental health pace. Baby, what about the mental health of, the, of all these victims? And I don't wish anything bad on anybody, but baby, he got money. Yet Trump running hit for president again, shaking my head. I don't care about that. He know he in deep shit. Meanwhile, old buddy from quiet went from quiet on the set, been roaming free for years now. I don't understand what you were trying to say. Who else zoomed in? <laughs> that's the plea. That's the please just help me out this one time prayer walk. I agree. Diddy, this is sad and diddy this is serious this is sad diddy what are you going to do i don't know what you're gonna do diddy i don't know how you're gonna get yourself out of all this trouble diddy you diddy no see don't get money and fame and don't know what to do with it you this what this is what happens when people don't know what to really do with money and fame and fortune this is really sad not only are you <laughs> All of, not only is all this going on with you, Diddy, but you have your sons involved in this. You have led your sons down a road of destruction. I remember when um, Misa Hilson came out and said, oh, no, not my son. I'm not about to keep playing crazy while everybody sitting around and act like they don't know that you are sick and it's something wrong with you. She had tweeted that after her son was arrested for DWI, a DUI, and everybody was like, well, he's grown. Why is it on Diddy to get him out if he want to drive while he's intoxicated me? So you wrong. And now it's all starting to make sense. She was saying that because if you guys watched my other video when I talked about this, that whole incident with him and his son at the studio where they tried to act like it was a drive-by. Now we know that the story, in my opinion, that was put put out before the media was that he had been arrested for a DUI when in reality, he was up at that studio with his dad and, and just like Diddy did back in the day when all that happened with him and Tupac and Biggie, he stayed at the, at the scene when Pop allegedly was shot, Pop out at the studio allegedly but this time he had enough sense to leave but from my understanding according to what's going on how everything is unfolding right now before our eyes i believe what misa hilson was talking about that day is the fact that you want to try to put in the media that my son was arrested for a dui when you know during well you had him at the studio with you with your bad dealings he's a witness to this you got him lying to the police and he had been taken into custody did having the power and um, money that he has access to 
I guess he was able to pay somebody to put that type of story out and have us believing that, oh, his son been arrested for DUI when in all actuality, he had been arrested for something in connection with what you tried to like to the police to say was a drive-by pow-pow and, and that wasn't even true. So, Diddy, all of this stuff is just about to come out. I mean, those sons, they are old enough to know what's going on, but although they are old enough to know what's going on, if this is something that he has been grooming them into, participating into with him since they were very young, I mean, we have to take all of that into consideration also. That they are victims of their dad's behavior. In my opinion, depending on how long both boys have been participating and if they have been participating, that is why I'm continuing to say that I want to get on here and I want to read all 75 pages of the Pub Daddy lawsuit. You know what? Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Um, let me see. Just one moment. Because for some reason, it's not letting me go back in my downloads. Hold on, y'all. Okay. Sean Combs accused of actual misconduct by music producer. Rodney Jones Jr. filed a federal lawsuit on Monday. That says the hip hop mogul made unwanted actual contact while they worked on an album. A lawyer for Mr. Combs denied the allegations. Let's see. Um, let me see. Where is the. Okay. In November, Cassandra Ventura, who was Mr. Combs' longtime girlfriend and was signed to his bad boy label under the name Cassie accused him of ape and years of physical and actual abuse in a detailed lawsuit. That is that lawsuit. Okay, lawyers for Mr. Combs have been fighting the remaining lawsuits in court, arguing and filing, arguing in a filing last week that a claim from a woman who says that Mr. Combs gang aped her in 20, 2003 when she was 17. Okay. But where is the lawsuit from? Okay. What is his name? His name is Rodney Jones. Okay. Let me put it in here. Hold on, y'all. Rodney. Okay. Let me go and pull the court documents. Just one moment, okay? Hold on. I'm going to mute you guys for just a second. Hold on one moment. Okay, so I found the court documents, but I'm gonna make sure that I have that I actually have up the right documents. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, that's not it. Hold on, I'm pulling it up now. Okay, here it is, right here. Okay, so. What I'm doing right now, y'all, is, uh, and again, Facebook, if you guys want to see what YouTube is able to see on the screen, then you need to go to YouTube and type in The Real Convo, D-A-R-E-A-L-C-O-N-V-O. And then once you get to The Real Convo, hit the live tab and you can see what I am seeing. Okay, so. United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York. Hold on. There is no way. Okay, you guys are going to have to give me a couple of moments of your patience. I have to get my um, mouse because if I don't have that mouse, then no.
Okay, so I'm back and I have on my glasses so that I can see properly, guys. So I'm just going to get over here and I'm going to start reading this document. This is the 75 page lawsuit that the male victim suing Diddy filed. Okay, so that's what this is that I am about to be presenting and reading to you guys, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the screen once more so you guys can see it. And again, if you're on Facebook and you want to see what I'm reading, then you have to come over to YouTube to The Real Convo and hit the live tab. So United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York, Rodney Jones, the plaintiff versus Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Haptamarian, Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Coram, Shalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's, one through ten and ABC corporations one through ten. I wonder who these John and Jane Doe's one through ten um play um are. I wonder who they are. Defendants are okay, and you see the um trigger warning there, but the lawsuit reads, let's get into it. It says plaintiff Rodney Lil Rod Jones, Mr. Jones. Hereby alleges as and for his complaint against defendant Sean Combs, defendant Justin Dior Combs, defendant Lucian Chor. Okay, so it's giving you all those names up there that I just read. Jurisdiction and venue. One, this court has personal jurisdiction over the defendants under and consistent with the constitutional requirements of due process in that the defendants acting directly or through his agents or apparent agents committed one or more of the following, the transaction of any business within the state, B, the making of any contract within the state, C, the commission of a torturous act within this district, and the ownership use of possession of any real estate in this state. From September 2022 to the date of the filing, defendants have consistently and purposely availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. In return of these benefits and protections, defendants must submit to the burdens of litigation in New York. This litigation arises from or relates to the torturous activities defendants visited upon defendants in the states of New York, California, Florida, and the United States Virgin Island. This torturous conduct violated United States federal RICO laws. Requiring defendants to litigate these claims in the district does not offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. Plaintiff's claims arise from some conduct occurring by defendants in New York parties. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popular, popular, popularly known by his stage names, Puff Daddy, P, uh, Puff Daddy, Puff, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or Love Mr. Combs, came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. He rose to to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip-hop mogul. Mr. Combs resides at 200 South Mapleton Road, Mapleton Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90024. Defendant, and here's a picture of defendant Sean Combs. Oh, and it's telling it's giving you his birthday, giving you a little bit about his career. He has appeared on TV series like Catfish, the TV show Wild and Out, and Hip Hop Squares. Defendant Justin Dior Combs resides at 1550 North El Centro Avenue in Los Angeles, California, 9028. Defendant Justin Dior Combs 
Defended Lucian Charles Grange is the CEO of Defended Universal Music Group. Defended Lucian Lucian Charles Grange resides at 53551 Ross Avenue, Unit 34A in La Quinta, California, 92253 and 668A uh, Chautauqua Boulevard. Uh, Boulevard and Pacifica Palisades, California, 90272. Oh, wow. Mr. Lucian Charles Grange defended Ethiopian Haptamarium Hapt is the former CEO of Defendant Motown Records, the parent company of Defendant Love Records. Defendant Haptamarium resides at 13701 Riverside Drive, Apartment 8, Floor. Sherman Oaks, California, 91423. And Miss Ethiopia have to marry and defend it. Christina is the chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs, Combs Global Enterprises. She resides at 10445 Wilshire Boulevard, apartment 501 501, Los Angeles, California, 90024. And then it's just giving you the addresses of all the um, defendants. Um, as you can see right here. So it's just going through Defended Motown Records. It's giving you their address, Defended Universal Music Group, Defended Love Records, um, Defended Combs Enterprises, and Rodney, Lil Rodney Jones. Um, he was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second Oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long gospel music influence. Okay, Mr. Jones is the plaintiff, the person filing the lawsuit. Okay, Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. And at the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present day, Mr. Jones was, has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. Okay. So it's giving us a little bit about Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the, some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in music history. Throughout the duration of the, his career, Mr. Jones has worked the south side of Chicago music scene. Let me see. Hold on. Playing with the following legendary uh, greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clark Sisters, and Smokey Northville. Donald Lawrence is a good, I mean, he is a great, a great, great artist. I personally listen to his music. But as you guys can see, there is definitely a 75-page lawsuit. And here it is. Now, we are stopping on page 7 of 73. I want to go through here. Look at this, y'all. Look at all this stuff in here. Look. Look. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Charlize Recording Studios popping. So here is the part that I was talking about where, where um, when I said Misa Hilton, Misa Hilton was like, no, we're not going to play crazy while everybody sit around and pretend, pretend like you're not sick and that there's something wrong with you. When her son, what I just said about the whole um, DUI and then it's supposed to be an alleged popping, allegedly, 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 everything I'm saying here is allegedly. Um, an alleged uh, popping and not some drive by popping. And sh shoot, he had her son in the center of all of the, the shenanigans. And that's what she was saying. Yeah, so here, right here in this lawsuit, y'all, on page, okay, it, it starts top, okay, here's the summary of events, y'all. Rodney Little Rod Jones, here's the summary of events. September 2022, November to, to, to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs. Okay, hold on. So it's just going through like everything, you know, the beginning to the ending of his relationship. 
with Diddy and how all of the events took place. Shalice Recording Studios popping. It got in this lawsuit, the Shalice Recording Studios popping. And I'm saying popping, but I'm really saying, okay. And then we have in here, let's see. Men popped outside a party at Hollywood Recording Studio. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, let me hear him get off of there. Mr. Jones was actually harassed and assaulted by Mr. Combs. Ooh. Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay ex. Okay, here is the picture that's supposed to be the screenshot of supposed to be Stevie J in bed with a uh, white man right there, y'all. So that's supposed to be the picture of Stevie J in bed with a white man right there. Y'all see that? That's that's supposed to be that's this is supposed to be Stevie J. And some porn star came out and said, No, that's not me. But if you look at this really, really close, if you look real close, that mean the frame of this man's face is shaped up just like Stevie J's. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. His nose, the wideness of the nose, how Stevie J got them thick eyebrows right here, how he kind of got that, you know. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Y'all know exactly what I'm trying to say. So I'm just like, uh, okay. So are y'all really finna act like that? That's not Stevie J. Just because a porn star came out. Look, look at the hairline. Y'all know how Stevie J hair cut is. Come on now, that's just too similar. Y'all gonna tell me? That they don't look like that could be Stevie J just because a porn star supposed to came out and said, oh, y'all be reaching. Y'all really be trying to find stories on people. I believe that Stevie J and them paid that man to come out and say that allegedly, in my opinion. That's what I think happened. That's exactly what I feel like happened. But they didn't show this part. Okay, Thanksgiving 2022, Mr. Jones is actually assaulted by young Miami's cousin. I told y'all, y'all thought I was lying. Now, look at the pictures. Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day, right before Mr. Combs invites Mr. Jones into the restroom and attempted to force him to take cocaine. Young Miami and her female cousin who actually assaulted Mr. Jones on Thanksgiving Day. Oh my goodness. See, we got to go through these. The ex workers that Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. Oh my goodness. What is that? Oh, God, goodness. See, I can't show everything because YouTube is sensitive. See, I can't show that. Okay, hold on. Let me see. What is that? Booba trap on the river. As a part of Mr. Jones' ex-worker recruitment tools, Mr. Jones provided Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with a exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river as a signal to any ex-worker be appro he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit and or have ex with the end. Baby, listen to me. On or about July 2nd, 2000. Okay, read this in bold. Mr. Combs and J. Combs solicits drugs and engages in illicit ex acts with minors and ex workers on or about July 2nd, 2023. Hold on, let me put in my um. Hold on, y'all. I don't have in my speaker. Hold on. Ooh. Sorry about that Facebook. 
So on or about July 2nd, 2023 in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party at his home. Present at, present at this party was a R&B artist redacted, Jay Combs, ex-worker, and some underage girls. The event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female ex-workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several ex-workers appeared. In addition to the ex-workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. The event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female ex-workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several ex-workers appeared. In addition to the ex-workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink laced De Leon liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Mr. Combs did not check the identification of any of these underage girls. The presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. He attempted to leave, and Mr. Combs forced him to stay. Mr. Combs went so far as to take Mr. Jones' car keys to prevent him from leaving. After being forced to drink laced De Leon shots, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked with a ex-worker sleeping next to him. Screenshots of a video from the night is embedded below. Ooh, I can't, ooh, 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 ooh. Let me, I can't, ooh. Okay, this is the night Mr. Combs with the underage female. Underage female. Ex-worker. I could the, the frame of this look of this girl right here tells you that she's a little girl. You could tell she's a baby. You could tell that that's a baby. Baby, I told you I wanted to go through all 75 pages. Look at her. D4 is Taylor threatening Mr. Jones. Oh, hold on. The love album. Okay. Cuba Gooding Jr. forcibly touching Mr. Jones on Mr. Combs' yacht. Is that you, Mr. Jones? That's Cuba Gooding Jr. Throughout his time with Mr. Jones, with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was under an implied work for higher agreement. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs or for the songs he produced. As evidence, he, he was listed as a producer for the following songs on the Love album final release. Deliver Me, Stay Part One, Reaching, What's Love, Stay A While, Moments, Need Somebody, Homecoming, and Tough Love. Mr. Combs and defendants LRMRUMG all benefited from Mr. Jones' work product. They failed to compensate Mr. Jones for his work. Oh, hold on, y'all. It's too much. Diddy's former bodyguard accuses the rapper of snitching on Sean over 1999 shooting. Okay. Sean Combs, Jennifer Lopez arrested after New York shooting. Oh, y'all. Fahim Muhammad, Mr. Y'all. Do y'all see all this stuff in this lawsuit? I told y'all. Y'all thought I was playing. Y'all thought I was playing. So we stopped at about page seven. So we, I'm going to come back on here tomorrow. And, and go live and we're going to break down everything in this lawsuit there is a lot in oh wait wow i told y'all let me know if you agree with tonight's commentary
If you agree, why do you agree? If you disagree, why do you disagree? Let me know why you agree and or disagree. If you have not already, sub already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. It costs you nothing. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Real Combo. Until next time, i see you guys later. Have a good night. Thanks for tuning